Today is all about RV maintenance. And wouldn't you know it, I'm kind of broke. <laughs> I don't know how this keeps happening where every time something needs to be done on the roof, Phil can't climb up there. <laughs> it definitely was not scheduled that way, I don't think. I don't think. Yeah, I don't yeah. think. No, mm -hmm. I had my knee um, operated on 10 days ago and I still don't have full range of motion on that. And then, what, what's today, Tuesday? Three days ago, my back went on me. <clears throat> so Nurse Stacy here does not want me bending, you know, climbing, sitting on the roof, all that stuff. So she's elected to be. I'm taking one from the team. Yeah. I volunteer to tribute. tribute because he tribute. cannot go up there. All right, so there's going to be a couple of things we're going to tackle today. We're going to do hot water heater, the AC, um, the slide seals, seals, um, and I don't know what we'll add on to the end, but everything we do, I will actually put an index down in the description. So if you want to see a certain thing, whether it's a hot water heater or whatever, you can bounce around to that. Also, if you haven't downloaded our RV maintenance spreadsheet, spreadsheet. Um, feel free to download that. It's already set up. All you need to do is change some of the components to match what you have in your RV, and it's all set for you. Yeah, and I'm actually going to add AC <laughs> maintenance to that because um, we're a little behind on checking a our little. our evaporator and our coils. So A lot behind. How about we haven't done it yet since we've owned Ruby? Yeah, that's what I meant. A lot behind. <laughs> One of the things on our to-do list today from our maintenance spreadsheet is the hot water heater. There are two types of water heaters in RVs, the Suburban and an Atwood. We have a Suburban, which is a steel constructed water heater. The Atwood is an aluminum constructed water heater. It doesn't need an anode rod. The Suburbans need an anode rod. So today we're going to check our magnesium anode rod. Um, it's been a year since we um, last checked it. You should check it at least once a year and replace your anode rod once it's half gone. Now, if you want a complete step-by-step <clears throat> how-to um, for your hot water heater, um, you can check our maintenance from last year when I did that and Phil was walking me through how to do it. So we're going to do it quickly today, but if you want a slower step-by-step, -step, I'll link that video down below. Yeah, first thing we did though is we turned off the, 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 the heater itself. So it's been cool now for a couple of hours. So hope we, hopefully um, when we open it up, we just get cool water. So I did turn it off inside at the control panel and I also turned it off here just in case. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to depressurize it, open this bad boy here. In order to get the anode rod out, I'm using a three quarter inch socket to unscrew it and pull it out. Yeah, look at it, it's coming out milky white. New, one I just pulled out. I mean, there's still a lot of life left to this anode rod. I don't know if I want to change it out. It, this is where at the bottom, as you can see, where it's really doing its work here. It's kind of... We could put it on our list to recheck in three months if you want yeah, to hold out. I think so, because this looks like she's doing... So we've, we, I guess this is an indication that we've had some pretty good water or our water softener is definitely helping with our anode rod. I'm going to have to research that. I think it's a water softener. Yeah, I do too now. We've had the water softener about six months. Yeah. And this has been in there over a year. Yeah. I think That's it made a stuff. difference. Yeah. Now the water's slowed to a trickle. I'm going to put, put the wand in, turn the water on, and flush whatever contaminants um, are laying on the bottom of the tank, kind of swirl it around a little bit and see what I can get out of there. I went ahead and flushed it out twice using this handy dandy uh, water heating flushing tool. Uh, and we'll put a link down below to this little guy here. Now we're going to put the anode rod back in. Still looks pretty decent. All right, so now I'm going to tighten it down. You don't want to tighten it too much. You want to get it hand tight and then give it a couple turns. You don't need to crank down on it. So now that's sealed. Uh, I'm going to turn the water back on, refill it, and then I'll come back close the pressure relief valve once I know it's getting full and we'll turn it back on. Last thing I do before I put the cover back on is I just kind of take a peek and make sure there's nothing in here that needs to be cleaned or wiped down, insects that get in. Um, and from what I found, my little screen guard here over the water heater um, vent area keeps dirt daubers from getting in. But you want to be mindful of 
your water heater, there's little spots, especially right in here, where the, the flame hits the, the propane. Dirt darbers get in there, build a nest, clog it, and then your water heater doesn't work. Then you're calling an RV technician, which they don't mind. They'll come help you. But you can do a little preventative maintenance by checking these little areas here and putting a screen on your um, water heater cover. We have been using 3-in-1 RV Care rubber seal conditioner for our seal since we got Ruby. So for the past three years, we try to get it on every six months or so. Sometimes Bo goes every quarter to make sure those slide stills seals don't crack and don't dry out. So it's really important to help prevent leaks around your uh, slides. So this product does help extend the life of your seals too. So if you haven't taken care of your slide seals, lately maybe you should think about it because summer is upon us and it's about to get really hot and it's going to start drying out your slide seals when was the last time you checked your slide seals when you do maintenance on your slide seals look at the overall condition of your seals they should be black and free from cracks dry seals will look dull grayish and may have cracks also check the sides of your slide for black lines to see if the seals have dried against the side of the slide these are all signs that the seals are not being maintained often enough and may be beginning to break down. Maintaining your slide seals is super easy. All you have to do is spray on this rubber seal conditioner, wipe off the excess, and make sure you get on the inside of the seal as well. See, it only takes a few minutes. I'm not gonna bore you with both sides. Basically, hit all your seals and you're good to go. Before we go on the roof to clean the two air conditioners that we have, First, we're going to test our AC and see what the temperature is on the inside. Um, we're gonna perform what's called a Delta T, and the Delta T checks the incoming and the outgoing air temperatures um, to give you a range. So on this side is the, the research side that's pulling the hot air and humidity out. This side is the cold air coming in. And what you wanna get between the two of those is somewhere between an 11 and 20 degree difference and that'll let you know whether your air conditioning unit is performing at its optimal um, output. First thing we're gonna do is turn the air conditioning unit on and we're gonna let it run for 15 minutes. While it's running, I'm going to take my digital thermometer, put it in the research side for 15 minutes and get the temperature of the air that it's pulling out. Then I'll switch over to the cool air coming in and get a temperature reading over there. One of the things I forgot to mention is you wanna find the, the ducting closest to where your air conditioning unit is on the roof. So these two here are feeding right off of our front AC. So I'm gonna start by putting it in here. First 15 minutes are done on the output air leaving the rig side. So now I'm gonna switch over here um, to the cold air coming in and test it for 15 minutes. What we, what we got out of here after 15 minutes was 71.4 degree temperature Fahrenheit as the air was leaving. So now we'll switch sides. Again, closest to the air conditioning unit itself. I can get this booger to stay. Second 15 minutes are up, 45.5 degrees of cool air coming up. I think we're over our 20 degree difference in the Delta T. So that means these bad boys are pumping pretty good considering we haven't cleaned, <laughs> now don't, don't say anything, no judgment. We haven't cleaned our coils or the evaporator since we own the rig. It's, all, it's one of those things that I've, I've had on the list and just every single freaking time forgot to do it. Um, but now with it starting to warm up, I told Stacy we've got to get it done. I've got all the supplies. It was just the time to do it. So I have the shrouds off and I have the air conditioner all exposed. Of course, before we came up here, Phil and I turned off all the power to the rig, including the um, power to the house. So everything is off so I don't have to worry about shocking myself. Well, hopefully I don't have to worry about shocking myself. So the tools we need for the job are um, the foaming cleaner, 
and we need the evaporator foaming cleaner. So um, both of these are recommended. This one is highly recommended because you're gonna be breathing the air coming off these coils. So you want something safe to breathe. And this one actually costs way more than this one. So we're gonna kinda use both and divide and conquer. Other tools you're going to need are these combs and you're going to need some gloves so you don't cut yourself um, because it's pretty sharp. These coils, you can see how damaged they are. They should be straight up and down. They should not be bent. So every time it's bent, these coils, whether it's in the center or on the end, it will affect your, um, your air. Now this stuff is pretty dry. You don't have to uh, rinse it off when you're done. Although I appear to be getting it everywhere. So we're going to use uh, the cap, which is like a brush, and we're going to brush this through. It's going to get some of the dirt off and it's going to help straighten these coils. Oh yeah, this thing's working like a champ. All right. This actually isn't too bad. It's not very difficult either. I do have a couple places on here that's still folded, but for the most part, all of this was super easy to do. And this little brush is not only pulling out the dirt, but it's also, fixing my coils for me. Now also when you're up here, you're gonna wanna look inside here. You're gonna wanna look for any extra dirt, debris, uh, dirt daubers, uh, bees nests, all of that stuff. And it actually is not too bad. It's pretty clean up here considering. And that's it for this side. All right, so again, I'm switching my cleaner because um, this is much cheaper and we're not gonna be breathing this in. All right, now I'm just gonna calm it out. All right, it is really important to make sure these coils are straightened as much as possible because for every inch you have of a bent coil, it decreases your temperature by, the, by an eighth of a degree. So if this thing is all mushed up, you're really going to decrease the efficiency of your air conditioner. So it's really important to come up here and check, make sure the coils aren't full of any kind of dust and debris and bugs, and also make sure your coils aren't bent. That is it for the very first air conditioner and now I just need to put it all back together and move to AC number two. So I do have to put a disclaimer on here. I am not an RV professional as you guys probably figured out because it took me forever just to get the covers off. So I am not an RV professional. So, um, you know, make sure you research before you fix your ACs. And if you need some school, if you wanna to go to tech school like Phil did, then be sure and check our links down below. And um, NRVTA is the perfect place for school. You can do it there or they have courses you can do online as well. So it is a great way to learn how to take care of your own RV. All right, one down, one to go. We're headed around to turn the power back on, but I thought you might be interested in a few of my lessons learned <laughs> while it's on the roof. First of all, it's not nearly as hard as I thought it would be. It was actually pretty simple. Yeah, it, it looked real simple. I mean, the hardest part to me, I would think, is taking everything off and getting access to the coils. Yeah, so that you could start spraying because the spraying you're just spraying and hitting it with the cap yeah it was pretty easy unless you have trouble with the socket set sorry my contacts are moving unless you have so trouble with the socket set we had two sets and so i was trying to make the little socket fit on the big extension and that seriously took me longer than anything else i know guys i have more work to do i've got to get her trained <laughs> hey i got it right Absolutely. it worked um another thing i realized is if phil's turning on the house power now right in there if you decide you want to be an RV tech and you do go to NRVTA and you get certified as an RV tech, this is a job that I would hang my shingle out and do because for a couple of reasons, you need very little supplies. Yep. 
the job really is quick and easy. You're not repairing the AC, you're just doing the maintenance. You're cleaning the coils, you're making sure there's nothing in the AC, you know, bees nest, daubers, anything like that. Um, and you're just making sure everything is plugged in and there's no frayed wires. Easy. Yeah, if you're looking for a side hustle in the RV space, um, exactly what she said, RV uh, AC cleaning, uh, you could chalk it up to and then, you know, throw in a couple of different squirrel cages just in case somebody oh, yeah. needs a squirrel cage yep. while you're easy, up there. Um, that would be a great side hustle and that's just it. You're just going to be there to clean and maybe repair um, the squirrel cage on the AC because there's really not much else to it than that. Nope. Uh, you could probably make some decent money. Yeah. And it, if trust me, if I can do it, anybody can. And we all know I am not a professional. Phil went to NRVTA, I did not. So he's the one who schooled me today. So if you think it's something that you might want to do just for yourself even, so you know how to repair it, I'll put the links down below. Yeah, and the great thing about the schoolhouse is- Hold if, on, I worked out today, my oh, arm yeah. is jello. <laughs> the, the, the good thing about the schoolhouse is if you can't make it to the schoolhouse, they have an online class that you can take. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have an RV, haha, -ha, never fret. You can go there and stay in their cabins that they have. So if yeah. you're wanting to get into it, you just don't know, and but you want to have a little more education about the RV, it's a perfect opportunity. Yeah, for sure. And there's actually two links. One link down below will be to the online school, and one will be to the schoolhouse. Yeah. So you know that's one of the things we wish we had. There's a car is more knowledge about our RV before we purchased it. So if we yeah. could change one thing, that might be what yeah. we would change. Yeah, I would have definitely hunkered down and, and taken the course a lot sooner. I mean, it just, there are people that go through the course because they're wanting to start a business, but yeah. I, I guarantee there's, there's a large group that goes there just for the knowledge to be able to work and fix on their own RV, and that is absolutely spot on what you get out of the class. All right, we're going to turn the power on at the breaker because my arm is about to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> we just completed doing our second Delta T and it came out to 29.2. The first Delta T was 25.3. So I'm thinking that our ACs are working as they should, probably even better, I guess, because the averages on your Delta T is anywhere from 11 to 20. So we're, we were over 20 both times. That means that we're getting good airflow in and out. Everything's working like it should. And I'm liking that cold air coming out of there, 45 degrees. Nice warm blanket, just perfect. Did you see our secrets video? <laughs> Do you remember number three when we said we suck at YouTubing? Here's a prime example. <laughs> Phil is fixing stuff in the rig without a video camera. Yeah, I suck at YouTubing. So I just wanted to get in and get it get it fixed or repaired, um, you know, I just got antsy and decided to jump up and get her done. Yeah, he does that sometimes. He's not thinking that you guys might be interested to know we broke the countertop. Yeah, so let's fill you in. <laughs> um, what had happened was, so this little piece right here goes in the counter like so. And it's to keep things from falling off and water from Especially spilling, water. spilling, you know, over the back uh, if we're not level. Um, so this has got three little notches in, that go into the grooves on the countertop. Pretty cool. Um, but what caused us to have to repair this is our coffee pot, which is on that end of the counter, flew down this way long enough, or it, it flew as far as the cord would let it. Then the coffee pot, the carafe itself, popped out and hit this and broke the, I guess, the seal or the glue job on the bottom of this. So that's why we had to fix it. And I know you're asking, why did the coffee pot fly down the counter? <laughs> well, that's because Phil slammed on the brakes as we were driving down the road. We hit a red light at, I don't even know what, all of a sudden it turns red. So, yeah. you know, this thing doesn't stop on a dime. So Phil no. hit the brakes and it's funny cause it's, we've been on the road for almost three years now and it's the first time we've had a coffee pot move. I mean, it, it might've moved an inch an or inch two, or so, yeah. but it has never flown across the counter. So this was a first time. Yeah. And because the coffee pot is on our checklist and on our slap wrist bracelet, we always empty the pot and get rid of the, the uh, coffee grounds before we get underway. Luckily that day we didn't forget because we would have had grounds, at least grounds everywhere because it did tip over. Yeah, so that that is one thing we do as a just in case measure. But yeah. so all Phil's got to do now is glue this bad boy back down and then he's also going to seal it. Yeah, I didn't want to bore you with the, the gory details of cleaning it. I mean, everybody knows how to clean and prep whatever they're going to re-glue or re-caulk. So basically I just scraped all the old stuff off. 
um, remove some of the caulking and I hit it with a little gooby gun to clean up the residue from the caulk. Now I'm going to, I'm either going to put it down with some E6000 or some JB Weld. I'm leaning more towards the JB Weld Me because too. the E6000, although it's pliable, it would probably hold it in place. Yeah. Uh, I'm going for long term. Yeah. And it, that's pretty funny. Phil said he didn't want to bore you with the details of cleaning it. That was crap. It had nothing to do about boring you. He forgot about, I didn't did. even think about, see, he doesn't even think about the channel hey. and making videos. See what I'm dealing with here. I'm from the get her done tribe. <laughs> As you can see, I went ahead and finished without the video. So what I went with was the JB Weld on the bottom and I just put a dab every couple inches across the bottom, put a little dab inside the, the three holes here, Put this back on side and then we have weights for our dumbbells that fit a perfect U over the siding here so it was able to add weight to it and hold it in place and then once this was all dry I went ahead and siliconed around the edges just to make sure we had a good seal around the backsplash here in the corner as well and finished the job so sometimes you got to just get in there and get it done without the video camera but Stacy won't let me do that going forward no, I will not. <laughs> and never do we just get it done. We just make it take three times as long as most jobs and we record it. Yeah. So everyone else will, will see what may or may not be down the road for them. Yeah, I can't do a 10. There's no such thing as a quick job in this RV anymore. I have to record or we have to record everything. And Stacy will oftentimes make me go back and redo something that I did. I don't know what was going on with Gizmo. He was running back and forth. But anyway, it's done. It's in there nice and tight. Um, I'm pleased with the job, and it looks like um, it never had moved. All right. Well, that's it for this video. That is. That's We're enough done. maintenance We're out. for now. Done I, I'm done volunteering as tribute for today. But I can tell you, maintenance is a, a item that you need to stay on top of. And our spreadsheet that we have is user-friendly. You can plug in your own systems, your own method, whatever you want to do, but at least have a plan to attack something every month. You want to stay on top of these things. You want to be proactive instead of reactive.